Welcome back, guys, to the round seven of the Remote Duel Invitational. We have a lot of matches yet, uh, and make sure to check them out if you missed any of them live. You can always go back and watch the VODs, uh, or just uh, even on YouTube, they will be uploaded. So make sure to check them out, because we have had some incredible action from players all over from different parts of Europe. And uh, now we are with the last two rounds for the day. We are going to decide the last match for the top eight that will be streamed tomorrow. But uh, now it's all about the next match and it's all about Marco, the winner of the qualifier from France against Alexander. So this, one of these uh, players is uh, probably playing uh, uh, the most unique deck this weekend. But I want him to be the one who tell you guys about. So let's uh, bring up the interviews. I have been involved with the game since I was a kid like seven, eight years old and I've been playing since then. I stopped playing for a couple of years when I was 16 years old and then I came back like three or four years ago. The first deck I played was probably some kind of chaos, like the old school decks like with the Chaos Sorcerer and Sangan, Chaos Emperor Dragon. Uh, my favorite card would be uh, Shadow Construct, because I love Shadows. They're probably my favorite archetype. The deck I'm playing is Berker Walls, because I think it's the best deck right now. It's really consistent, can make uh, Calamities really easily, which is a really powerful card. And I've been playing the deck since it came out, and I'm really comfortable playing it. So my fondest memory uh, could be going to play to the local shop uh, as a kid with my dad, because he also played with me and going to play with him and yeah and this, what was really fun and i remember those days and it was great what a great story to hear from marco i i remember when i was back in the uk national doing commentary that uh, marcus patel who ended up being the winner of the event uh, had also an incredible story uh, with uh, his father and his brother coming to events ever since he was like this small. So it's uh, it's really cool to see these, uh, these family stories coming to Yu-Gi-Oh! events and uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's great and I'm sure both of us will uh, pass on our knowledge if and when uh, we will have children. Uh, hopefully not uh, for you because you are <laughs> enough. Uh, you are enough on your own. But uh, as he mentioned, uh, he will be playing Virtual World. It has been a while. We saw a lot of them at the beginning of the event, but now it has been three rounds since we saw the last one. So it will be nice to see it uh, in action. And the deck uh, we were hyping you guys about is the one from Alexander. So let's hear it from the man himself. Oh, I've been involved in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game for 16 years now. I started in 2005 when the TV show started airing on Serbian national television. The first deck I ever played was uh, 40 random cards from uh, from booster packs, but the first actual deck that I played was Structure Deck Merrick with Grey Keepers. I have a favorite card, of course, and my favorite card is Madolce Messangelato. I'm playing Madolces and have been playing them since Return of the Duelist, and they just seem a lot of fun, they keep getting new support, and I love them. My fondest memory that involves Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably Getting, uh, getting booster packs for placing top 8 in Serbian Nationals and pulling two Sky Striker engages. That must have been nice and uh, definitely we all have some uh, bad luck or good luck uh, packs and stories. But as he mentioned, we are excited to talk about his deck as it is Madolce and it is quite a unique deck. You were telling me as uh, during the the past days he qualified with this deck and he also uh, started to share some experiences about uh, uh, how he played this deck so he released a video talking about uh, this deck in specific and some of the combos yeah so you told me that it seems quite powerful right yeah with only one card he can put up like seven or eight cards in the field so hopefully we will see that in action and uh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm absolutely uh, looking forward to some Madolce combos. The last time we saw it uh, quite typed up was uh, at the World Championship back in Orlando where Samir uh, was uh, just showing the world uh, what it's like to be uh, a fashion icon in a way and just bring uh, such a deck to the highest of stages. 
but now our players are ready so let's not waste more time and let's go to the table okay so I want to say this is probably one of the most important uh, die rolls of the weekend. Uh, up until now it wasn't as important, uh, but if there is one thing that the deck struggles with, uh, it is probably uh, the Calamities. Yeah. So right now really Alexander really needs to go first, because... Uh, we... <laughs> I mean, I really want him to showcase us uh, the power of this deck. Yeah. And uh, as I told you before, uh, he showed us that uh, with only one card, he can put up an incredible field. So I really hope uh, we will get to see what his deck can do. Uh, I don't think Marco will never expect uh, Madol Madolce being played oh, in this no. tournament. No so way. Maybe he doesn't even know how to play against this deck, because in this format where a lot of end traps are played by, by the players, uh, you don't even know where to activate, mm -hmm. maybe. So... I think it's a different concept from what we have seen up until this point. So it was like players who wanted to, uh, who didn't feel comfortable playing a virtual world mirror match, and then players wanted to counter them. In this case, it's quite different. Alexander just plays what he, he feels uh, is good and what it's his favorite deck. So I'm uh, really excited about it, but uh, I think he might have lost the title. I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, Either way, it's gonna be a, a pretty interesting duel, but who is it gonna be making the first move? It is Marco with his Vitral World deck, uh, starting once again with a Pot of Prosperity, just showing out is one of the best spells uh, of the game at the moment. And now soon uh, Alexander will find out what his opponent is playing, but as you said before, he did an in-depth video showing uh, what he played against uh, during his uh, trip to this Remote World Invitational, and they defeat a lot of virtual world decks, so... Well. Yeah, and uh, okay, what a weird, uh, what a weird pot, uh, I gotta say. Only Ash as an option and three copies of GG yeah. revealed, though she's not gonna be something you see every day. And uh, okay, seems like uh, he doesn't like any of the other options, so the first one was good enough, which was a Lily. Uh, makes sense, because if you have a monster, okay, it's, uh, it's already a, a decent start, not the best, but... Let's see if there is any interruption. So Alexander on his own plays a lot of end shops. He's maining uh, Ash Blossom, Gamma, and he's maining Shifter, Dimensional Shifter, which is uh, uh, quite a uh, powerful card we have not seen yet. Yeah, it's one of these cards you really want to draw in your very first turn, because otherwise uh, it's not that powerful, but it uh, doesn't seem like Alexander uh, drew it. Yeah, so... although you gotta say that Madolce is one of the decks that can manipulate the graveyard easily, so it's one of the few uh, deck that can use uh, the Dimensional Shifter even later than turn one. Yeah. And now, okay, something we don't see very often, he sends this one who to bring mm -hmm. back the Lulu. Kind of different uh, type of star, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. but he discards... Uh, okay, 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 this is this makes sense. He discards the... The Shing Long, and now he can just uh, banish it from the graveyard and use its effects. But now, really good play. Uh, he can uh, abuse the Vermilion uh, combo, destroying itself. So, Very good play here by Marco. And uh, let's see if now Alexander has some sort of solution. But uh, seems like everything should be fine. And now he gets back the Lulu. Some sort of, kind of, of explanation, but uh, here it comes the Lulu. Okay. Marco really needs to keep in mind that um, he already. He... Oh, here comes the Herald. Yeah, wow. that's that's one of the few uh, the few decks in his deck, and uh, you usually see wow. in, in Drytron, and this could have been confusing, but he discards the Angelic, meaning. Uh, uh, revealing what his deck is, and I'm sure now Marco is like, what's happening? Uh, do you think maybe he should have waited for the Herald? Because he knows that his opponent is playing Virtual War, so he could, end, uh, he could end up with the True King of All Calamities. And um, I don't know, because now with the Lao Lao, he could send, I don't know, maybe the Nyanian. It depends what he has in his hand, because he, 
I think it can still continue to combo off because um, what I'm thinking is that uh, maybe he should have, he could have kept the the herald in order to activate it on the Joking of Oka like mm -hmm. this. But uh, if he has enough resources, maybe Marco here can go for the Joking of Oka Lamedes anyway. Yeah, that's that's the same as I was... Uh, I was thinking... Uh, I'm not sure, maybe he felt like uh, Marco direction was to summon uh, uh, number 75 uh, and then preventing it anyway, but if not, uh, then you definitely keep the Herald uh, because you can use it at any time uh, and just negate the calamities. Now uh, it doesn't seem like much has changed, uh, and uh, this true king uh, is gonna put in some serious work against the uh, Alexander deck. Yeah, because uh, if he doesn't have any other solution rather than the herald, the true king uh, of calamities is gonna hurt. So uh, let's see what he picks up. Okay, so now plays back to, to Alexander who. Surely uh, tried to stop, but now at the same time only has four cards to play with, and he set three. Wow, wow that's okay. definitely unusual for his deck. Uh, it's it's not uh, a deck full of uh, full of traps. You usually search for traps, uh, but he does play a very interesting one, which is the Grave Digger Trap Ball, which is there because he can summon uh, Rafflesia pretty yeah. easily. And it's very powerful, but uh, it doesn't seem like. Uh, he has some sort of solution here for the trucking of all calamities, and uh, play was passed back to Marco. And now he has the Ching Long Engrave, maybe if I'm not mistaken, but okay, he moves the trucking of, of all calamities in attack mode. Okay, any under battle phase. I think now Marco maybe understood that he's playing against the Madolce. Yeah, even though. It's not obvious that he yeah. knows what his opponent is playing, because right now, uh, what do you expect from those yeah. back rows, honestly? Could be everything. Wow, and even a fourth one. Uh, seems like, unfortunately, Alexander doesn't doesn't find a way to play the game. This is very, very unusual. I'm, I'm absolutely wondering what the phase down could be. Uh, one of them, uh, quite possibly the Grave Digger. Yeah. yeah, also because he doesn't play that many trap cards. So, I don't know, maybe, okay, now Marco goes with GG, and uh, uh, if Alexander doesn't have any sort of interruption here, uh, he's gonna get in trouble. Does he have the Great Tigger, maybe? Let's see. He has it, okay. Yeah, and here it is on the screen uh, for you guys as well. Uh, great Tigger, Trap Ball, uh, Alexander doesn't really wanna I draw it, uh, he would rather send it with uh, Rafflesia, but uh, what can you do? It's uh, it's out there right now, and uh, at least uh, it will try to uh, give him some more time, but without an out to the Calamities, I don't think he will be able to do much this game. Yeah. And uh, it might be enough, because uh, as we were saying before, Alexander plays just a couple of traps mm -hmm. but uh, did not prevent him for taking damage yeah so, so now he takes uh, even uh, another swing to uh, only one more turn for alexander to try and find an answer is he gonna find something uh, he needs quite a, a quite a lot to fight back to be honest no yeah. he just passed back and I, I really don't see how this this is not gonna be game on the spot uh, unfortunately for uh, for marco it takes a big risk too, and another grave digger is uh, is flipped uh, to negate it. Uh, would, would you even have taken the risk? Like, what if he plays torrential tribute? Yeah, like, I mean it's a huge risk because uh, at this point you really need to attack. Wow. Okay, he had the yeah. Yeah. So he, he had the gamma, but well. So what an unfortunate end from Alexander. Even at the cosmic cyclone face down, which is definitely not for this matchup uh, uh, necessarily, but. Happen sometimes, so Marco will be happy to take this game one, and he's now uh, probably has a confusing look on his face, uh, thinking about uh, the side deck uh, options. Uh, uh, on the other hand, Alexander uh, should be confident. What do yeah. you think he is gonna do? Uh, I think in his main deck, he doesn't really need that much, because uh, maybe he could set in the Lancia just because he's good against the visual mm -hmm. world. Uh, 
match, but rather than that, I don't I don't see any other cars that he could side in. Yeah, it seems like his side deck is mainly focused on going second with cars like Kaijus and Dark Blue and No More, which are all there to shut down uh, the calamities. But outside of that, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the only car that would expect going in if he starts is the Lancia, probably switching uh, some of the entrops uh, and out and uh, potentially even the Cosmic Cyclones, if he feels like it. Uh, they are good against the trap, but going first, uh, maybe there are better options. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how this one uh, shapes up. But as you see, uh, Alexander super fast with yeah. his side deck. <laughs> he doesn't pretty much touch it, so he knows what he needs to do and uh, he's come prepared. Just gotta hope that his deck doesn't let him down once more. So. And what do you think about Morocco? Because not it's not that Tough. it's not that obvious because against Madolce, what do you say? Yeah. No, and especially because you didn't see anything. You yeah. saw you saw a Madolce and Jelly yeah. with an Herald, <laughs> and then you saw two grave diggers, which maybe if you don't think about it, you don't even notice the trap hole. Uh, so you don't notice that yeah. they are there for Rafflesia. You might think this is an heavy trap deck, and then you bring in uh, I don't know Lightning Storm, Red Boots, stuff like that, which might be completely useless. So. I don't know, probably sides in uh, Feather Duster. Ghost Ogre is there in his side deck, and I think that card is good against uh, Madolce if used properly. It's not easy, but if you know the deck well, uh, it can be quite annoying on the spells. So maybe. Let's see. I know for sure that I want to see some combos coming down from the Madolce <laughs> deck. That I can tell you. Okay. Seems like they are ready. Are we gonna see a dimensional shifter too? That's that's gonna be important yeah. from Alexander. Okay, let's now see if Alexander. Okay, we start things off with the Ball of Prosperity. Decent start, good. although now the shifter cannot be used, at least uh, for a while. Is now banishing six cards from the extra deck. And let's see what he's gonna find out. Probably looking for. Um, Anything alongside Madolce Salon or uh, just the Wood Cake. Uh, um, for now, some terrible reveals, honestly. Wow. Wow. Aren't these just five, though? Five? Yeah, okay. Wow, these are actually not that great. Uh, not a fan of any of these cards. He was looking for Angeli or Wood Cake. He didn't find any of them and. I mean, uh, it really tough. depends on your hand, because... Uh, yeah, so he picks up the ticket, uh, but he really needs uh, Angeli or Rootcake to put in some work right now. Because the rest, uh, he might have even bricked twice if he doesn't have one of them. Hopefully that's not the case. Uh, let's see, he does start things off with the ticket. Uh, I saw a Gamma in his hand. Yeah. He's not... Opponent has a response. Yeah. Okay, he calls the Magilin. Okay, Magilin uh, not being exactly what you were looking for. The Salon would be would be great, uh, but now uh, let's see. Okay, this okay. is start. So the, uh, this is the new addition to the deck, the between uh, Chester. So and I really like this card because when you special summon, you can uh, special summon another Madolce monster from end of deck. And now maybe we will see some combo here from Alexander. Really looking forward to it. So, okay. The effect of the... Yeah, so... I think Sensor was activated. It seems like uh, at the end of the day he's finding his way around this. Uh, it will be on Marco to, to have a response. Uh, and if he does, uh, it's not even obvious where to use them because I'm sure he's not super familiar with this deck, but this is exactly what we were talking about. Uh, when you open uh, with this, you can then summon uh, the Messen Gelato easily from the decks, uh, and uh, you either get uh, uh, some trap cards, you get the Chateau, so it's uh, it's a lot of uh, advantage. So It's kind of more on a grind deck than not, so let's yeah, see. Yeah, as we were talking, as we were saying before, uh, with only Magili, maybe hopefully we will see the entire combo. Because he's now shuffling back one more from the graveyard yeah. into the deck, and now we can activate the and uh, get the gelato. 
As mentioned now, the gelato comes down. Uh, oh, okay. Or maybe the oat cake uh, in before, yeah. And yeah, and the gelato also. So, uh, incredible stuff here. Anibiru would probably be the worst uh, card uh, that happens, but it doesn't seem like Marco is too interested uh, in the duel at the moment. Uh, seems like uh, almost he left uh, the table, but is there probably watching and, and contemplating his uh, his life decisions uh, on how he ended up on such a stage against a deck he probably had never played against before so we were concerned that he didn't have nothing with that because with that power of prosperity was not that good but uh, no 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 he already had a solid end yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the magilin was uh, uh, good enough uh, with the ticket he needed the ticket but with the ticket uh, it was good enough He's now thinking, okay. Yeah, Chateau gets added to the end. Uh, not a big surprise. Uh, has been there since the beginning. Uh, and now even the wood cake uh, comes down. So pretty pretty standard things. And this is what we wanted to do. So if you guys are interested in playing and trying out uh, this deck, uh, it's not super easy, but Again, you can uh, pretty much uh, have an idea here in this game of uh, what you should be doing. Uh, I think now we will get the Salon. Yeah. Yes. So now he has the ticket, the Salon, the Chateau, and, and everything he really <clears throat> wanted. So I think maybe here he wants to special summon the Link Monster. Let's see. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so for now, again, showing uh, not surprised, he's being super confident with the deck, of course. If you bring such a unique deck, then uh, you must be confident. Uh, and with both the Salon and the Chateau, this is the perfect setup. Now you get to, to search for some trap, and uh, that's, that's just the dream, uh, the dream opening. Uh, you can get the Knights, uh, uh, it's just getting out of hand uh, real quick, or even the Promenade. Yeah. And now I can activate once again the Chocola because uh, he shuffled back the cards from the graveyard to the hand and he gets also the Promenade, yeah. which is very good. And now he, will, he brings back another Gelato. Mm -hmm. What a hand. Yeah, absolutely. And this is all started just because of Amagili. So you can see why uh, this deck uh, might have been an underdog, but... Uh, it won uh, uh, Alexander uh, the, the ticket to this event, which is already a big win by itself, honestly. This is uh, as big Yu-Gi-Oh! is uh, uh, at the moment is the, the biggest tournament uh, uh, you can qualify for and uh, he is making everyone proud uh, back at home uh, because he is doing it with a deck uh, and even Madocha Knights now is considered. So as you can see on screen, the promenade is there. So this seems like a perfect setup. Yeah, this is what he was asking for. I mean, this is the perfect thing. As we said before, with only one card, with Magilin, he was able to put up this field, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's not done yet. So. Yeah, he sets the Madolce Knights, he sets two more, wow. And with the Madolce Knights, uh, he has an answer to whatever might be happening. Here he makes Rafflesia, I believe, okay, or maybe no. Okay. Okay. Let's see if, he's, if this is enough, or... Okay, he passed the turn. Okay, I mean, <laughs> this is enough, uh, probably. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. This is uh, absurd. Wow. What a what a what a no start. Imagine. Yeah, I mean, Madolce back in the day was just a very slow deck uh, with like a search a few cards, uh, and now look at what he can do with the same cards, pretty much. Just a few addition to the extra deck. So. Incredible amount of resources, and the knights uh, is just such a powerful counter trap. He can uh, negate uh, any possible side deck card from Marco. But this is tough. How do you get rid of all this advantage? It's very difficult because uh, he really needs to deal with all the monsters, but he also has the shuttle, the ticket. Yeah, and the link is there to and protect the them there, too. So, so it's uh, it's not gonna be easy. I have an headache just for <laughs> thinking of how to deal with this and I, I wouldn't want to be Marco. This reminds me a lot of uh, the Brown Kids deck we already mentioned, like just so many resources and he's gonna try his best, you can't blame him. There are still 30 minutes uh, and more on the clock so he doesn't have to worry about that right now. 
I need straight to, to come back into this game with the Chain Long, and uh, maybe Alexander wants to respond to it, but uh, I mean, uh, I don't think you really need to, to do something here. It's okay, but uh, not uh, not get great. So yeah, you just wait. Let's see if now Marco has some monsters. Okay, he activates the Lulu. Is there gonna be a response here? So we don't know how many he has set. We do know that there is a promenade and a knights. Uh, Maybe so, a oh. cosmic cyclone or something else, but doesn't seem like. Hmm. Doesn't doesn't actually do it for, for now. So the problem is, uh, virtual world uh, is definitely a strong deck, but it's not the best at dealing with. Uh, a board that keeps on coming back, uh, like the one Alexander has. And he defeated, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of virtual wars, like four or five virtual wars on his way to the qualifier for this event, so... Yeah, it's not going to be easy for Marco because... Uh, I mean, the concept is the board of the decks keeps recycling cards, but... Uh, I mean, Madoche does it in a very different way. It's not gonna be easy for Marco because not only he has to deal with uh, <laughs> with this board, yeah, but also for the turn after. Really tough. And as you can see, like Alexander has two cards in hand. If any of his monsters uh, are destroyed, then he can use the shuttle or the ticket to get even more advantage. Uh, so it's he it gets out of hand real, real quick. So. Too bad that in game one uh, he completely bricked because uh, I might have seen uh, something similar to this, but I, I have no idea what Marco is be thinking right now. He just needs to probably just needs to to see what his opponent plan is, uh, and by doing so, if this game ends as it seems, then prepare a strategy for game three, or probably just pray that. The same thing happened as, as in game one, where you go calamities and they just scoop. Uh, uh... It's not going to be easy for Marco because uh, the teacher, uh, because when uh, Madoche the is sent to the graveyard, uh, you can shuffle up to two cards from the graveyard into the deck. So I don't know. I mean, it's very tough. Uh, that's why I decided to go for the T-shirt instead of the Rafflesia, because in this way he can prevent Marco from activating the cards in, in his graveyard. Mm -hmm. And he has the Shinglong in this one. So yeah. maybe we will soon see the T-shirt being activated by Alexander. I think he did already. He did touch. Oh yeah, he did yeah. touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tough, tough times uh, and... Uh... Uh, I can't blame him, like, what What can you be sure about? Yeah, so the, the souffle resolves, and uh, and now it's uh, it's on his side to find a way to do it, so... Uh, I'm not sure, as you can see here on the screen, uh, the, the teacher glass souffle is... Uh, it's such a powerful tool, because not only it can be used uh, as a combo piece, as Alexander did at the beginning of the turn, but also as the last card uh, he uses in the turn uh, to just uh, shuffle back uh, uh, and protect monsters by being immune, so... It's incredible, incredible usage. Okay, now he gets, uh, I think, another promenade. Yeah, because he has everything he needs, so... Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, it's just free advantage. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the interesting uh, thing about his, his decklist is uh, that he only plays one copy of Ticket and one copy of Chateau. So uh, that's something important to mention because maybe the strategy should be to focus on uh, banishing uh, those away with like a cosmic or something like that. Because once they are lost, they should be lost uh, forever. Well, yeah, he's basically not fearing uh, cards such as cosmic cycle or yeah. stuff like that. So... But it, it's also because your opponent doesn't know you. When they don't know the ratios, then uh, it's much better because they are also in a way, the worst and the best card in the deck. They are the best card in the deck because they can easily be searched by any combo, 
but they are the worst because you want them in your deck and not in your hand. So. And if you don't know how to deal with them, it's also difficult because, uh, I mean, if you don't know how to stop them, how can you deal with them? You know what I mean? So, um, it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Here, just some clarification because there was a lot going on from Alexander during his previous turn. Yeah, just clarifying the situation and. Uh... If there is a need uh, for uh, uh, the the play, it will be done just as it was in the previous rounds, but it seems uh, as if they should fix this uh, rather quick. Uh, it is mainly just a doubt uh, from Marco, since he is not familiar with this deck, so Alexander is trying to explain to him uh, a lot of things happening at the same time. The Chateau, the Ticket, uh, the... Salon, uh, all cards that uh, happen simultaneously or almost uh, so it's uh, it's not something uh, you are used to then it can get pretty confusing and as you're seeing here he's just showing uh, the promenade but yeah we should uh, resume play now the thing is that uh, now that Marco knows what his opponent is playing maybe he should be prepared for game three, although it's going to be very difficult because, uh, as we were saying before, Alexander plays a lot of hand traps of virtual wars. And uh, right now, he's looking good. Trap car and the promenade as well. Okay. So, interesting now for the first time we see the fortune tellers being uh, summoned. It's uh, a fortune tune, it's not a card that everyone is playing, so number 49, but it's uh, it's up there, It's uh, he's even <laughs> reading it of, on his own, and... Uh, Maybe his first time yeah. in summons, it, you know, he's there just it's in case. It's more of a desperate yeah. <laughs> play, but sometimes it is uh, what's necessary. It's not easy to deal with all these things, because... Uh... Alexander has a lot of cars, a lot of effects happening simultaneously. Yeah. Again, it just reminds me a lot of uh, the prank it's uh, deck. Correct. And let's now see if Marco has any any other cars to go on with this combo, because uh, it's going to get very difficult for him. Mm -hmm. Again, Alexander, I think he's just explaining to him all of his effects, so... Okay, he's declaring an attack. Yeah, taking damage using his effect. And now... I don't think that uh, the Fortune 2 will prevent... Okay. Yeah, so now he goes for the downer. And this means that he's gonna go for the Zeus, which is uh, definitely the best way to deal with such a board, but uh, it should be dealt uh, with uh, by his opponent, uh, with the Knights, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Alexander thinking about it. Yeah, Alexander is considering what to do, just because, you mm -hmm. know, he has a... Let's see. Pretty interesting uh, idea. This is exactly the only reason why the fortune tune uh, is there. Uh, could this be enough? Uh, no. So he flips okay. uh, he the, the promenade. promenade. Then he chains the Zeus again, huh? and does yes. he not have another response? Uh, this is interesting because the Knights, of course, requires no monsters in grave. Wow! wow. I think. Uh, wow! Oh wow! This is uh, not what we expected. So he managed a way to just fight back, uh, and then he summons uh, the Zeus, uh, completely getting wow. rid of uh, of everything his opponent was doing. Uh, this is uh, quite unexpected, but uh, congrats uh, uh, for Marco. And the fortune will pay it off because it, is, it was the only way to deal damage, you know? Wow. I would have never expected this because 
we haven't seen players uh, summoning, you know, Fortune to Not Downer, but uh, he was able to deal damage and summon the Zeus. So something that you don't see quite often from virtual world. Yeah, you usually see it uh, from Zodiac uh, and definitely not from this deck, but is this an option? Uh, not everyone uh, is playing it this weekend. Uh, but you can see here how Marcos got rewarded for his decision and the Zeus might just be the difference uh, in this matchup. Uh, I I think it, it just got rid of eight or nine cars on the field. That's uh, absurd. And he's not that yet because he has this one who. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, he, uh, if he does have another virtual world monster, maybe he can put up uh, something else. Because let's see. Yeah, because now we can try to just... Uh, uh, if he has a decent hand, uh, it might be the, that he goes for a Calamity as well, so... He's gonna require some effort, but maybe it's possible, and... Uh, this is definitely a good way to start things off, so... Lily comes down, he's gonna be sending uh, Queen Long uh, alongside uh, Shushé. It's incredible how he managed to deal with uh, all of that stuff, you know? Maybe Alexander was not even expecting this because, no. uh, you know, you don't see number 49 being played often. So I think maybe it was the only way. Yeah, yeah, for sure it was yeah. the only way, yeah, probably, uh, in the format uh, to deal with such a board. Like, evenly matched and Zeus are pretty much the only cards you can uh, you can choose. And unfortunately, as we mentioned, Madolce Knights require no monsters in Graveyard. So the combo should have been set up in a way where he ends with no monsters, which wasn't the case because uh, of the XYZ he used. Which he gets to keep because uh, the effect is that uh, it is immune when he detaches a material. Yeah. So. And he also has the Lily, so he has both the Chush and the Shinglong. Mm -hmm. And now I think you can uh, proceed to go on maybe for Lao Lao. Yeah. Now he's going to discard one car. Uh, Let's see. He had the driver, now he's gonna discard one more, then the Lala comes down. Debating uh, really hard about this. Uh, it is definitely a game uh, deciding move. Yeah, it could also maybe have an interruption. So maybe he doesn't want to waste it, but... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he's forced yeah, to. He discards the Ghost Ogre. Probably the six card because otherwise we would have surely saw it uh, uh, against uh, the combo from Alexander. But he picks up teleport as well. Wow, this is huge. We are definitely getting uh, <laughs> calamities down uh, this turn, and uh, this changes everything. Yeah, this is uh, this is big. So he's playing super fast now, and he goes for number seventy-five even. Uh? Doesn't think like he needs to do much else, so he, he's gonna use the Lao Lao, the last card in his deck, uh, sending uh, maybe a Queen Glow next turn, yeah, and getting to bring back uh, yet another yeah. card. Okay. Impressive play by Marco, by the way, yeah. just playing so fast. Uh, gotta give uh, credit to him uh, for knowing his deck that well. And now finally the Sheshe, which changes his effect. Okay, no. Seems like he's uh, he got a little ahead of himself. Uh, he's maybe you know explaining to his. I, I think Alexander knows what Shenshin does because he has played yeah. against tons of people. I mean, cards. maybe, maybe, but yeah. Or maybe just one of. I think he sure, is explaining know? it to him. Yeah, but. I think so. Because if he does, then the goal is to go for uh, Cloud Castle, maybe, and bring it back. Eh? Yeah. And now we can uh, bring the the, the trucking of all calamities. Okay. So what absolutely happened? brilliant stuff from Marco. Like not only did he manage to fight against a board of five monsters and five spell and traps uh, by Alexander. He found a way to summon the Zeus, uh, clear them all, and on top of that, to summon number 75 uh, and uh, the Calamities. Incredibly this is played. probably the most impressive virtual world uh, player we have seen uh, today. And now we get to see uh, Calamities come down. 
preventing uh, Alexander from playing the game. Uh, and he also lost uh, the only one copy of Ticket and Chateau, which yeah. are now in the graveyard. Yeah. Now Alexander is only left with a couple of cards, incredibly. Yeah, this plenty. is not something you would have expected uh, from uh, the way this game was going uh, just a few moments ago. But uh, what can you do? Yeah, it seems like uh, he's desperate enough. He will probably just set the promenade uh, yeah, turn uh, a monster to try and survive and uh, play his back on Mark. Which you can see is just super excited. I mean, back to Shea It's incredible how this game changed. Yeah, so absolutely. Quickly. And the Shea is great against Mad yeah. uh, yeah, Madoc. So, let's see. Gonna count uh, the cars. He can vanish. Uh, let's see. Just gonna check how many. Yeah, he goes for the Shea right away. Yeah, I think he's activating the Shen Shen. Yeah, Shen Shen. Let's see. He also has the Xinglong engraved, so if he wants to activate it, he can discard the card that he... I think the last card in Alexander End was a gun. Uh, yeah, one of the last one cards. One. So, yeah. maybe there is a, a way to just use it at the very end, but this is tough for now. Yeah, now Alexander is just asking Marco maybe for some clarification mm -hmm. for the activation. Let's see. Yeah, he gotta figure out how to use his, uh, his yeah. last resources, but as, uh, as expected, uh, Shen Shen is activated. Is there gonna be a response uh, from Alexander? Here comes the Shen Shen. Yeah, so he comes back. Uh, uh, now we can banish the Queen Long uh, if he wants. And get maybe a Lulu. A Lulu. Because he has the Lulu. Yeah, yeah he has it's the Lulu okay. Lulu but it depends how aggressive he wants to be. He can also get the Lulu Lulu as well. I wouldn't mind the Lulu Lulu. Because then, if he gets the Lulu Lulu. Okay, so... Okay. As expected, uh, he's gonna try and, uh, and go for a few plays. Okay. He sends the city, I think. Yeah. Uh, doesn't seem like Alexander here has uh, some kind of uh, interruption. He has the... The trap car, but now he goes for over million mech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just wants to push for uh, for game at this point. He has the 75 just in case any Biru comes down uh, and surprise him. Uh, but it seems like he has everything he needs to to just fix the pieces of this puzzle. And the it is one of the longest match we have had uh, this weekend. Uh, if it was a regular one, it would be only four minutes until the timeout. But we are playing 50 minutes this weekend, so there are still 14 left, and now we see the promenade finally be uh, Really tough here, he has to choose uh, what to negate, but uh, I mean... Marco is going to get rid of all uh, of, his, of Alexander monsters, because uh, he can't really protect them. He takes back the hood cake. And now... Now we could go... Let's see... Um, I don't think he will be able to... To push... Yeah, to push yeah. enough damage. I don't know. It should be... Should it be enough? I mean, it depends on the... Uh, the cars left, it, it should be a lot, but... 
probably a little sh short and uh, the gamma shouldn't be an option because the 75 can just prevent it I guess but okay we're gonna see the last effect of uh, the XYZ being used this is uh, this is tough he can even go if this is not enough for a second calamity is uh, Problem uh, is he has the Shenshin on field, he has the number 75, mm -hmm. he has the Chogik of the Calamities. Yeah, it's just gotta give credit to yeah. him, he's, as I said, them, the, the one who has played the, the cleanest uh, up until now, uh, is really showing some confidence uh, in the Virtual World deck, and I think it is no uh, joke that he won uh, the, the French uh, uh, yeah. qualifier, because... Uh, if he has been playing this clean for the entire event, then uh, it just makes sense that he was able to win it all. So maybe he's, uh, he's going to win it all uh, again uh, this weekend. Yeah, he's showing us how well he knows his deck and how, how to deal with a huge field. Because uh, the field that Alexander put up was, uh, was incredible. So... Yeah, it was... Uh... It wasn't a joke and uh, <clears throat> the fortune tune decision really paid off. It is not something that all of the other players uh, have done, and maybe it's uh, what Alexander uh, didn't face up until now. So the Queen Long are shuffled back, uh, but uh, the damage is uh, inevitable, and uh, Calamities is used. Uh, but maybe. just, uh, I don't know, to prevent uh, guards. <laughs> <laughs> Possible uh, cards like that, but. Let's see. Just wanna doesn't wanna make sure. I don't know. He loses to fossil Dyna out of nowhere. Some some crazy card like that. So let's see. He's now continuing the battle phase. Uh, let's see if he if Alexander can survive this turn. Uh... They're counting uh, the number of monsters in grave. Uh, to count the damage. Yeah, I think they're just making some <coughs> clarification here. This could be the crucial turn. What so, is it? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. another chest. So. And uh, yeah, attack uh, attacks go on. Uh, Sander doesn't seem like he's uh, gonna do much else. Uh, we know he should have a gamma in hand, but he's not, not given the option to use it. Uh, he will be reduced to very few life points, and now another Calamities comes down. If he activates it right away, we are gonna see a gamma, and then the 75, but let's see how this uh, will uh, plan out. Uh, maybe he surprises us and he decides in going first. Uh, a lightning storm or something like that, and that would be a, a really fun way to continue this, uh, this match. And maybe have uh, one of the first uh, game freeze uh, of the day. Of the, of the entire day, because we all yeah. have uh, towards victory, right? And here the calamities come down. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a, a very different uh, Yu-Gi-Oh day. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, Alexander has seen enough, and yet another one of uh, the unique decks we have played uh, uh, is gone. Marco is the winner of the seventh round. So again, congratulations to Marco who advances 2-0 and, and is the winner. Why? Wow, what a match. Once again, uh, unfortunately, one of the unique decks. We had, uh, as we mentioned, uh, decks. We had Altergeist, Paleo, Madolce, uh, the Phantom Knight decks, which were the four unique decks of the event. Three of them were kicked out immediately, but the Phantom Knights advanced quite convincingly. So we are going to see more of it uh, later on. Uh, nonetheless, it was an impressive show. I got to say that the virtual deck was piloted uh, the best I have seen uh, all weekend uh, and probably uh, just in the past uh, weeks uh, ever since the deck has been uh, legal. So 
Uh, again, congratulations to the both of them. And we have uh, now one of the last two duelists who advances to the top eight. But the final duel is gonna come up real short and it's gonna be one of the most hyped one as he contains one of the players who were the favorites of the event, him being Adrian Derson. But I'm sure his opponent will have a lot to say about his win. Guys, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned because we will be back with the last round, round eight for the remote duel invitational.